Good morning, folks. We're going to hit all core topics of coverage today. The sun, weather, earthquakes, magnetic reversal, and cosmology. You're right now watching plasma filaments dance, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star. Very quiet. Coronal holes remain polar confined for the most part, with a trailing patchy opening on the south incoming. The bright spots are wannabe active regions, with the one incoming on the left near the equator having a tiny spot this morning. We will be watching that one for more. The solar wind can get very dense and bunched up when the solar wind speed gets too low. And with the cosmic ray alerts the last two days, those error spikes are not surprising either. The KP continues to show low geomagnetic activity. Even with some numbers on the board this morning, the three-day KP is less than 0.5. Cosmic ray health alert remains at moderate to low levels. Up next, the Horn of Eastern Africa, Somalia. Major floods have displaced nearly 300,000 people. The rains have been coming harder than usual, in more consecutive days than usual at this time of year, hitting one after another and set to continue for at least the next few days this week, storms popping up nightly in the region. Let's stick with the Indian Ocean and find that cyclone that was heading in that direction of Somalia now beginning to shift back towards India. While this happens, we'll see a cyclone strength storm developing near the coast of Sumatra, and so we'll have our eyes on both the northeast and northwest bays of the sea towards the end of the week. Folks, big applause as it has always seemed so silly to be to model plasma current sheets by temperature and density, as opposed to electromagnetic flux characteristics. This is one of the things harming scientists' ability to properly model solar wind energy input to the magnetosphere and the ionosphere which is what has those strong and immediate tropospheric effects also detailed in the recent papers. Again, electromagnetic flux, not the same methods as you'd analyze a random fluid. And one key interaction point for this energy is at the polar region. Excellent study here trying to better nail down the flows and energy transmission and transformation in the Birkeland currents, Peterson currents, magnetic fields, and Hall electric currents. Of course, some particles are so high energy, they are blasting right through to the ozone or lower. Interesting piece here describing the vastly more energetic and dense flux associated with complex system CMEs rather than the isolated ones. And so let's say we get a complex and energetic blast. Well, then, again, we are looking at the ozone. Interesting piece here on the depletion by solar protons in the March 2012 flares and radiation events. And please recall that it was this mechanism identified by Dr. Channel as the initiating cause of extinction events in fast reversal flip magnetic excursions. And speaking of which, I was reading a paper about 68,000 years of rain and aridity records when all of a sudden they began discussing magnetic excursions and one about 70,000 years ago. Folks, while we know a major extinction occurred then, along with the red binary shoal star system intrusion into our solar system and major volcanic events at an extinction choke point, the data on magnetic excursions at the time was lacking. Apparently not, though. We just didn't find those old papers. So we do now have a more complete list of the magnetic reversals in the last 70,000 years. And with Earth's field changing rapidly now, unprecedented in just the last few thousand years, yeah, Looks like we're due for another. By the way, I did go ahead and link that 1999 paper on the event 70,000 years ago. And now our top two stories. First, we are getting more and more detailed studying of electroquakes. The electromagnetic precursors to strong seismic events are now well documented and understood, and now they're going for the minutia. In this case, how Nepal's biggest give a one to six day warning with both positive and negative anomalies. The time and type are different for every fault. Folks, this is why the American Geophysical Union released the textbook Pre-Earthquake Processes last year. It's mostly electromagnetic. And why China and Italy launched the Seismo Electromagnetic Satellite, which you might recall, cited our papers in the planning stages. Learn more about all of this at quakewatch.net. See if you can predict earthquakes too. Last but not least, light. Relativity, Einstein. In a new posting by Stephen Crothers, we dive deep into the special relativity and light physics propositions with a plasma conclusion in tow. For those who don't know, he will be at OTF 2020 and is one of our headline presenters along with Randall Carlson, August Dunning, 
Doug Vogt, and many more. Chatting with Robert Felix, too, actually, the last day. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. Register for the conference at observatoryproject.com or otf.cells.com. Folks, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.